awful though. I hate. I didn't like uni very much. I found it very uh, socially sort of overwhelming. Didn't didn't go out much. More, much more of an introvert. Uh, stayed in. Didn't go to nightclubs. Uh, like you're the reason I didn't go, mate. No offence to you, but I mean you seem like a lovely guy, but you look like a walking thyroid. Like you're massive, pal. You are. You are. You're the reason. Like I get. The, um, you seem lovely. I'm sure you're like, oh yeah, we find it, but I am physically worried that afterwards, for no reason, you're going to throw me in front of a car. But still, <laughs> you're the reason why I don't go out. And I think because I'm quite like a social anxious person when I go out, so I sort of like prejudge, which is the wrong thing to do, like you're going to judge me for the whole night because look at me, I've got the body posture of a question mark. But still. <laughs> <laughs> but I get very worried on nights out, very socially anxious. And it got me thinking that there's no nightclub for socially anxious people like myself. There's nowhere for us to go and stare at our phones for four hours. So it got me thinking, right, like, what if I could create a nightclub for people like me? So we'd have to have, like, a, an apt name, an appropriate name, somewhere where my friends could go, uh, oh, uh, James, do you want to fancy coming to Paranoia tonight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why, he's asking. Um, <laughs> you know, you'd arrive, you'd arrive, and immediately the bouncer is weaker than you. That'd be great, just walk straight on in. Two drink limit, one to drink and then one to sort of hold, so I'm not just awkwardly staring at my hands. You know, no drugs, I think would be, uh, to be fair, there'd be one drug. We'd be uh, taking some lines of regretamin, yeah, which is uh, essentially looking at Facebook stages that you made five years ago. And uh, sort of, uh, to girls, you'd never have to worry about us approaching you, because we'd be so nervous, we'd barely know if you were there. Until you did walk in, we'd be like, ooh, there, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, oh. <laughs> Forget it, she's gone. She's gone. <laughs> and then to stop off, your taxi ride home is complete with your mum picking you up, complete with a Lucas Aid Sport and a pack of ibuprofen to see you through. What a great night! <laughs> Just carries me to bed. Yeah. Not because I'm drunk, because I'm 21 and I still insist on being tucked in. So, uh, <laughs> reads me the Gruffalo. Out like a light. Um, just before I go, uh, you're probably thinking, oh, you seem quite anxious. Because I am. I hate, I hate being 21. I hate growing up. I never wanted to grow up. And it's because of all the responsibilities of when you hit 21 uh, that you sort of have to deal with. Like, for example, I'm still learning how to drive. Uh, and I don't really get along with my instructor that well. He's a very old school, masculine kind of guy. Um, I think for me, that obviously isn't me. I think for me, real masculinity, um, a lot like the location of my real dad, very hard to pin down. <laughs> it's not fine. Like 15 years of hurt, never stopped me dreaming. Um, <laughs> although, unlike football, he won't be coming home. Uh, <laughs> you know, and my driving instructor pulled me over one lesson, and he said, uh, "Oh, James, uh, James, you seem to be struggling with the gear transitions. James, uh, got a bit of advice for you. James, uh, treat the gear stick like you would a lady. Yeah, be calm, be confident, be self-assured. More importantly, James, treat the gear stick like you would a lady." So I just sort of left the gear stick alone. And, uh, 